place, a lot of people, but small place. But we can, I can ask questions and people can give suggestions and we can take the work forward from here. So uh, some of the topics uh, with containers, uh, what a, uh, we were suspecting earlier, I, I personally found it out, was that scale is not just about how many containers can be connected, but it's about how quickly. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit. Um, we have to scale the control plane. We have seen uh, good solutions, uh, comprehensive solutions, um, in uh, open uh, stack, op open delight, all these, these projects. Uh, uh, we have uh, worries about scaling the control plane. There's a control plane which figures about who's getting born, who's, getting, who's dying, and uh, how to get the network through and through working with them. Uh, we need to scale that. This, this was a challenge with containers. I'm gonna talk about that. And um, case of mixed workloads, uh, the eventual thing is that networking is about, uh, eventual computation needs to happen. Um, there are nested compute units. There will be containers. They will be inside VMs. VMs will be inside VMs. VMs will be inside bare metal. We never get to see them probably, cloud and whatnot. Uh, so uh, those cases need to be considered for networking. There's a challenge of uh, passing the user intent, intent from the orchestrator. Now, when I mean orchestrator, I mean the container orchestrator. Uh, somehow there is a divide uh, that the networking provider is a networking whole thing which supplies the software, and then there is a container orchestrator, Docker, Swarm, or Kubernetes, or OpenShift, or Tectonic, or whatever, non Red Hat, I'm just saying in general. Um, the, the, the application developer uh, wants to use the application and wants to use the event network eventually, but how, how is the intent passed that what do I want out of the network? What are the tiers of my application? How do I pass it on to the networking vendor, which may be a different company, is not provided by the orchestrator. Kubernetes, at least, does not have its own networking solution. It, it has plugins. So that's a challenge. And there is a challenge of making uh, the networking providers work together. Uh, it's a, it's, it's, this is probably where I would hope that some of you can bring in solutions or ideas on uh, how uh, there was, when uh, Winship was talking about, um, there was a question on encapsulation and double encapsulation and probably triple encapsulation. We need to solve that, okay? It's, it's not solved yet and we need to solve it and there's probably ideas. Um, how do these uh, make these networking providers which are working on different layer, parallel layers work together? I'm gonna to discuss about the marketplace. There are so many solutions out there. I have few uh, that I have in, in mind. We can discuss about um, uh, what they do, how they're different. And hopefully I can do a demo. Uh, just five minutes before uh, the the network connection, whatever, it was so slow, it was doing uh, 400 bytes per second, so it wasn't working. Uh, but anyway, if the demo works, it's gonna be a live one, like really live, uh, so I need the internet for that. Uh, hopefully it works. So anyway, coming back to the original topic, uh, when uh, containers, they come in really fast and disappear really fast, that's absolutely entirely different from the way earlier nodes, how they used to be. We know that they're probably just processes. I mean, you can call them containers, whatever, new Docker or Rocket or something. They're just processes. They're just in a different namespace. From, as point, from, from the network point of view, there is a new network namespace. But um, from the user point of view, they just want a process. I mean, you, you would say, you know, this, this presentation is in a process of being in a container, like do a Docker container for Vim also, or everything. Uh, they're born and up and running in less than a second, not minutes. Uh, and the infrastructure needs to have a really, really fast response on providing a network endpoint. There are requirements that these uh, processes have. Not only that they want connectivity to the internet or external network, they want inbound connections to start happening from load balancers. They want uh, other policies to be there. Um, but they all need to be provisioned very fast. And, and that's the challenge of the containers, which is slightly different from VMs. You wouldn't have minutes there, you would have. So, uh, Pretty early, at least from where I have been working with, um, on the containers and the networking is, we came up with a solution of pre-allocate. You cannot have VMs be born and um, they take two, three minutes and you can say, hey, let's get that wiring up and done and see what policy it might get attached to. And while things are coming, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of it. We need to pre-allocate. Why? Because when the container is born, there is only one thing running in it, the process that needs the network. So we need to get the network before the container is born and not after the container is born. You can't have H0 or H1 be 
created after the process has already started because the process will, as soon as it starts, the first thing it's going to do is do a bind on the network uh, interface. So we need to pre-allocate all these things, uh, all the requirements of the containers uh, on the host. So uh, we, uh, uh, I would think that probably the idea is to pre-create, you know, like a, like a whole uh, bunch which is just comes out of the box, and uh, as soon as containers are born, uh, everything is pre-wired. There is no IPAM fetch for, you know, don't 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 try to get a um, uh, IP address for it or something. No routing updates across, pro, you know, uh, proliferating across and something. Uh, what we need is probably uh, e even if the things get wasted, you know, for example, there is a host which can host 256 containers. We pre-wire everything for it. The container is not even born yet. Probably there's just two containers running. But we need pre-allocation so that everything that is born, we just get the VH pairs, the previous talk was talking about VH pairs going into the uh, namespaces and outside and the OBS bridge. Uh, just the VH pairs need to be created and wired in. Everything is pre-decided. And that's how uh, 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 the difference between uh, networking with containers is that we need to pre-allocate. So uh, this is the diagram. Uh, uh, there'll be certain requirements around uh, uh, subnets be different for tenants. So uh, let's say we get a subnet A, which is some, some, um, some uh, IP address space here uh, for tenant A. Then we keep spare subnets around. We don't even know uh, how many containers are going to be born out of that tenant or how many Containers are going to be born out of that tenant, which is not even there. So we need some handshake with the orchestrator here. And we need to start pre-allocating. So let's say this had uh, 256 containers. And by the time we reach 220 containers or something, the controller should already figure out that, hey, I'm not going to wait until the end where I'm going to find out, hey, let's get a, a new set of 256 endpoints. I'm just going to pre-allocate and keep ahead of the pace of the containers being born, because containers will be born really fast. By the time I'm ready to get the whole you know, bunch out given by the IPAM manager. I should be already ready with the wiring. I should already have the isolation ready with sub subnet A and subnet B across node one, across node two, <laughs> and um, even across the clusters if that's the need. And I'm still not talking about how it is done. Uh, this is, I'm saying, this is what is different than when we do um, networking with containers. The other part was, uh, the uh, control plane, uh, quickly, uh, when we uh, try a little bit of the uh, existing technologies, for example, ODL, uh, we figured that there's a central place where things are computed and push down the OVSDB if you're using an open v switch thing. Um, so uh, to keep the scale out, uh, the central computation should not happen. We should not have a place which is central and saying, now there are going to be thousands, no, 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 10,000 or probably hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of containers getting born. And each of them, they have their demands, but uh, the computation of the network or how the policies are going to be pushed down, that cannot happen centrally. Uh, that computation has to happen locally, also for security reasons and also for scale reasons. Uh, however, the entire state of the uh, network needs to be kept at a central database, which could be replicated or sharded. Um, but that's one of the learnings uh, that we figured is, is, is different from uh, when we're talking about massive scale in a, a container cluster. Some of the security aspects is uh, that uh, if there, there are several nodes which are hosting containers, and those nodes could be nested, by the way. Uh, uh, what if a node gets compromised? It should never have uh, so much power that it can spoil other nodes. Uh, it should never have so much computation power that it can, uh, or, or access to the database so that it can spoil the database so that other nodes get spoiled. So these are the things which get uh, really uh, important when we do containers and uh, networking with them. Uh, some of the things were, are, were kind of missing when, when we looked at solutions. Uh, which were not just container specific. This is about user intent. Uh, and uh, the container orchestrator, uh, 
could be Kubernetes and it could be OpenShift, it could be Docker, it could be Swarm, something from Red Hat, maybe not from Red Hat. But this is what I was talking in the beginning, uh, that the networking provider will be a separate vendor, most likely. And there will be demands from the container orchestrator saying, I need some isolation policy, I need some external network access, I need uh, external network access and I can reach the internet or expose to external network, which means I have uh, you know, these green containers or the yellow containers need to be exposed to the outside network, which means they can be reached directly while you can have an overlay for the green containers or you know, there's an isolation policy, of course, green can talk to green and yellows can talk to yellow, but not to each other. Then there are other things uh, which are rate limiting, throttling. Uh, it's a challenge uh, to understand uh, how the uh, operator of the uh, Kubernetes cluster wants to enforce them. There are no APIs yet, and uh, we need work, which, which needs to happen there. And we were working on this. We are working on this. Uh, the trouble becomes that if uh, the orchestrator becomes standard, then uh, how, how do all the networking vendors kind of adopt that standard? It's, it's a little bit of a challenge. Some of the container SDN basics, this has been covered before, but uh, it, it's, it's a standard thing that we, uh, we, we want to do overlays. Overlays uh, use uh, encapsulation, VXLAN, Geniv, MPLS, they're common encapsulation standard. Uh, the diagrams have been discussed before, but this is particularly our, uh, in a generic fashion, this is what happens. There are two nodes, they're containers, they atta uh, attach themselves to a V switch, and there's an encapsulation between them, and this is how you go. Uh, there's nothing specific about it, this, this recap of the basic. Few extra requirements which come from the orchestrators which are multi-tenancy. Uh, uh, a very specific one which comes is uh, DNS related. Uh, there are almost always there is a load balancer on uh, container orchestrators like Kubernetes or OpenShift. Uh, there is a special deal about load balancers because load balancers could be global. Uh, the containers would have tenants. You could have two companies hosted on OpenShift Online, which do not want to te teach, uh, talk to each other. Uh, their network should be absolutely segregated. But there is a common load balancer, just, just bifurcated by uh, the layer 7 DNS. Uh, that load balancer would itself be a container. Everything would be a container. On an atomic system, you would see everything is running on a container. So even the load balancer is running on a container. It would scale as a container also, but this is on a special network. It's a special tenant, it means it's an admin tenant which has access to all other tenants. All other tenants don't have access to each other tenants. So, so these are a uh, few extra requirements which come, and there are solutions which have to be developed up and new to meet this requirement. Uh, there are other requirements like, uh, you know, there are admin roles which need to be done on, you know, monitoring, debugging tools which need to be run on hosts. And nodes, and those ones uh, have to bypass all the multi-tenancy requirements. So we need to have, if you're using OpenV switch, we need to have special rules to say, uh, well, this is an admin tool. Although it has security that if one node gets compromised, the other nodes do not get compromised, but within this node, please allow that it can access the other nodes, uh, all tenants and all containers, and see what is going on, who is getting bottlenecked, who's, who's getting what. So uh, these are the aspects which, uh, need to be looked at. These are, I, you guys can correct me. I, I'm, I'm not so, what's it called, mature in networking. It's, it's new for me. Uh, but these are the things which are different, which happen in containers, which apparently do not happen as much at scale in um, VMs. There's a case of nesting. There will be containers in VMs. There will be VMs in VMs, in VMs and whatnot. There will be VMs in metal. And there will be containers in container. Uh, and, and Google really likes to hype about it, that we run containers inside containers inside containers. That's not entirely true, but they, they like to say it. Uh, uh, it, it started from that LMCD5 project, uh, let me container, containerize for you. Uh, but uh, we, we, we understand the, at the Linux kernel level, uh, we still don't do network namespaces, don't, we don't nest them when we do Docker. Uh, but the use case is there. You would have uh, node one which has spun 
uh, C1 and C1 thinks it's its own master and it needs to do some more sub jobs or something, it will spend C2 and C3 and all of them need to have network connectivity and each one thinks it's, it's you know, there is a hierarchy of who owns who and when the applications are running, they're running in different tiers, they're probably owned by different, uh, uh, different teams uh, and, and they need boundaries between them, they need policies between them and, and that becomes a little bit of a challenge for uh, when the entire application has to work. Uh, for example, uh, there'll be compute units in containers, there'll be sub mathematical jobs be spun off by those ones inside another container and there'll be some good logic which is probably middleware logic running inside VMs uh, but when it comes to database, people may still prefer a, you know, a real metal. Uh, but all of them need to be connected, but still isolated. So uh, those policies become a challenge, and we need to see uh, how this nesting of things um, need to be solved uh, from a container since the advent of container, I would say. Um, yeah, that was the diagram I was trying to explain with words. Uh, I'll come back to this diagram. and and all of you, any of you need to suggest how, how this should be solved. Uh, would there be um, one single solution which will do, do it all? Probably not because you can do it. Once you say, hey, I own this all, then I can do it all. But from the marketplace point of view, it's a challenge because uh, these containers would be run by probably an orchestrator, uh, which is not the orchestrator of the VMs. And these VMs would be running on a layer, probably OpenStack or maybe multiple layers, which are not uh, plumbed by the guy who did the bare metal. So there is an interoperability challenge. Uh, this is a standard thing that has come to OpenShift team. I, I work for OpenShift. Um, and uh, they say the bare metal network was probably provided by Cisco. The VM network was provided by a neutron plugin, say Nuage and the container network by a Kubernetes plugin, say OpenShift SDN. Now, can you br bridge them all? That was the question which was asked. Can we, can we have layers removed? Can we not have double encapsulation, one done by OpenShift SDN, then done by the Neutron plugin, and then finally who knows what was going on at the bare metal level, and there were probably nesting going on. Uh, nobody talks to each other, and I don't know. I mean, this, I've drawn the line. This, this is my, these are my stupid ideas from uh, two hours ago. So uh, uh, how to bridge them all? Can we break a standard? Can we say, hey, you know, I, I did the VN, VXLAN in CAP. Why do you need to do it again? Just use that same VN ID or, or do something else or use the GenF standard and have some headers. You know, they have extensible headers there. So use that. So have you talked with o o o Open guys? Yes, exactly. Because, I mean, most of the set is just solved if on Open. Yeah, it's not exactly solved. So, um, so yes, I'm I'm in in good talks with uh, the Oven guys, uh, Russell and uh, Kurt and Shetty, and uh, the Courier project is uh, was supposed to uh, is aiming at uh, bridging the Lib network and a Neutron, um, and uh, so here is the picture again. The containers and VMs can be done by Oven which is the um, OVN project. Uh, the VM itself was plugged in by uh, Neutron. But when a container was born, uh, it says, hey, OVN, can you plug me inside this network? And OVN says, OK, I will do so. But I'm living inside a VM. And outside me, there is Neutron. So I need to tell Neutron that I, I am going to VX and cap this. And when I VX and cap this, when you go out, don't double and cap. So can we use the same IDs? So they need to talk to each other. And we need to have an API there. So yes, there's a, it's a solution. It's, it's a valid solution that now uh, the Courier project has taken the initiative to have one API be an, ext it's an actual extension of the Neutron APIs where you can say, uh, these are the ideas which I'm going to use and please reuse them for those tenants because the tenant inside the container called X is the same tenant which is called Y inside the VM world, and who knows what it's be outside. So we need to have those APIs. But as of today, it still resides in Neutron. What happens on the, uh, what happens when there's more nesting going on? What happens when uh, there is Kubernetes inside Kubernetes? I'm, I'm, I'm not joking, it is, 
there's no use case probably, but it may be laughable, yeah, it's, it's true. Uh, but people will do it. I mean, there's already Docker in Docker, and I have a demo for Docker in Docker. Hopefully it works. Uh, I, have a, I have a demo uh, of exact this diagram, actually. I, not this here. I have this, this time diagram, yeah. Oh, damn it. Okay. So there's, a, there's this machine, which is bare metal, and I have a VM. Oh, I didn't draw the VM there. And yeah, then I have a VM, and inside VM, uh, there are containers running, and those containers are OpenShift nodes. They are not actual workloads. And inside those containers, there are Docker containers running, which are actually serving something useful, and they, they're still not doing the entire job. They may still think that they're a master, and they may spin even more nested containers. So I don't know if the demo is going to work or not, but, but that's the exact demo that I had. And uh, you're right, Owen would solve it. And Owen is great because it would say, I will, I will hide all the open flow. We were asking, right, so who, makes, who needs to uh, solve the open flow ugliness? Owen will, because it just says, create a switch, add a port. Create a switch, add a port. You need a bridge to switches, create a router. That's, that's awesome, right? Because it's not speaking all that ugly language, because it's creating all those ugly languages behind the back. So we like OVN, and, and OVN will uh, connect the containers, OVN will connect VMs, because it just understands ports. If you can create a controller, it will understand it. But the interoperability is a challenge. So, um, honestly, uh, if you were explanation like this guy, Something wrong in the first place. Uh, no, uh, unfortunately, I mean, uh, who am I to say? I mean, this this came from the PMs first, and they say because they are hearing it from the customers. They they they've done OpenStack, they've done their VMs yeah, and everything, and then now they want to do container workloads. Yeah, they're going to run OpenShift on this it. This is so over engineered. Something. I mean, the problem is not the network. The problem is going back to the. To she has the called the spade a spade. I absolutely agree. It's probably over engineered, but. Let's, let's call it that then. Let's say we'll stop it and we'll not do it. Uh, and there's the other challenge of, uh, I, I don't know. I, uh, if people have done OpenStack and they've done VMs, they're going to say, let me have OpenShift nodes being spun up by OpenStack. I don't know how far we can unsell it. It's already sold. So <laughs> uh, from the networking point of view anyway, uh, if, you, if you also see the case of, this is not just Red Hat, OK? I, 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 I didn't know this was just. We're going to talk so much at that. Uh, if you see the Mesos case, uh, Mesos thinks it's the data center brain. I hope I'm not running over time. Okay, Mesos thinks it's the open, uh, the, it's the data center brain. It is not only going to spin VMs. It is on, not only going to spin containers. It is going to actually spawn processes, Hadoop workloads, and whatnot, database stuff. So uh, now we have so much of a mix going on, and the VMs that. Mesos will spin, it doesn't even have an account of what exactly it's doing. So people will run Kubernetes on Mesos, and they're actually tooting the horn about it. Uh, we can't stop it. And it would happen, I think. If you, if you look at, uh, if, you, if I see sometimes this, as you know, this whole internet thing and then the big data center thing becoming as a big Skynet thing. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not the first one. I mean, this, uh, this is a borrowed term. But uh, this is how, what will happen, because it will modularize itself. Uh, and we can't prevent it. So anyway, without argument, this, the reality is that it does exist. Uh, one of the uh, weird ideas that came um, with some person that I was discussing this was um, how to do interoperability with uh, IPv6. There's NVGRE, and I sit inside these containers or VMs, and then there is OpenShift SDN, which does VXLAN, uh, and Neutron does something, and these are all these layers and everything. Uh, how about having a and it shoot me down right now if it's so stupid. But how about having an IPv6, which everyone understands. No one is going to complain. I'm not going to do NVGRE. IPv6, everyone understands. How about at the boundary of your own overlay, uh, transferring it to uh, IPv6, your all IPv4, IPv6, whatever it was, get to IPv6. IPv6 has the big advantage of uh, headers also being um, chained. You know, you can have, it's like a linked list. So um, you can offload. Uh, some of the specifics of your own overlay onto the header as a stack and then pass it on as an IPv6 thing. 
And if every uh, software vendor kind of agrees on it, that uh, uh, where was the yeah that containers get out and they say IPv6 VMs understand that IPv6 and they say we have our own overlay by the way. So they say okay when it gets out of the VMs, I will put in an IPv6 header again and put it on the stack. When it comes back, I know how to unroll it. I am the NVGRE guy. I know how to unroll it. I am the VXLAN guy. I know how to unroll it. Okay, maybe this is getting too weird or something, but but I I was expecting people will either shoot this down or support this or dispute. Yeah, so uh, isolation uh, bits would have to go as part of those header stack. I've not thought through this. So I, if you think it's outright stupid, it must be. But uh, if you think there's some flesh in it or something, uh, we need more people to work on this and, and bring it out. Uh, I think containers, with the advent of containers and, and nesting, we, we need this kind of a solution. Anyway, that was that, and I, we can take more questions on, or suggestions on, on, on this thing that I've uh, brought about. Uh, did, Yeah, so throttling or uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, filtering. filtering yes, uh, it's a it's a demand. Uh, the solutions that we have developed so far don't do anything about it. Uh, there is a current demand on uh, external attacks being resolved by the load balancer itself, uh, and 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 that's there and that is there. Uh, we use F5 and um, HAProxy in uh, OpenShift, and that is there in terms of. You can do it. If if it's isolated, then it would not be able to, because uh, in OpenShift, at least, uh, if you have pods of your own project, if you want to kill your own pods, you would be able to. But you could you could flood it. Yeah, you mean you mean traffic shaping. Yes, that's. I, it, it's an absolutely, absolutely valid requirement, and it's something which you need to solve. Uh, we we thought we would start doing with some TC shaping there, but we haven't done it so far. But it's a very valid requirement. Yes, I, I, I as a container could just eat up the entire nodes thing and let the other tenants die or whatever. I don't care. Yeah, it's a very valid demand, uh, and some of the advanced. Uh, um, SDN solutions that uh, we've been talking to otherwise uh, uh, from Cisco and Juniper, they do that. They do specific controls uh, on rate limiting. Uh, OpenShift SDN, which is the one that I have been working on, does not do it yet. Uh, but yes, it's a valid demand and yes, it needs to be taken care of. There will be customer requirements around it. So this is the marketplace. There's Docker Lib Network, there's OpenShift SDN, Flannel, Weave, Calico, Cisco, Juniper, and Owen, of course, uh, they, uh, I just wanted to share how Lib Network is probably a little bit different from how Calico works and how it is different a little bit from OpenShift SDN. Uh, so Lib Network, what it does a little bit different is uh, it uses Linux Bridge. Uh, it was uh, done by the guys who were working on our OBS project, but anyway, they chose um, Linux Bridge. Uh, it, it does Linux Bridges inside uh, namespaces and containers are attached to the Linux bridge uh, per tenant. So if this is a network, green network, these containers would attach. If there is a container which wants to attach to both networks, it would have a VF pair going into both the uh, Linux bridges. And the Linux bridges are separately connected through their own VXLANs. Uh, this is slightly different. I like this idea. I mean, this does very nice isolation. You can actually see this as a network developing. It's, it's their solution and, and should use it if you like it. Um, there's a different solution by Calico uh, and host gateway by Flannel. Uh, this does not use encapsulation, which means it does um, create more efficiency. Uh, it's, 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 it's useful in containers. Uh, unfortunately, it requires that you own the uh, equipment and they use the VGP protocol. And node one, if there's a container, is gonna say, if you need to go to subnet A, use this rule. This is the routing table. It says the gateway rule via node two device that and it would just jump directly and it might just cause a little bit of floods here and there but you need to own the equipment. You would not have uh, it working on Amazon Cloud because you don't own that. Amazon would drop it because it would say Mac address this, source IP this, I don't know it, so it's going to drop it. Uh, 
uh, but these are different solutions. Open shade SDN, no talk, there is a demo. There was supposed to be a demo. <laughs> I don't know if it's done. Okay, hopefully. So um, this is my bare metal. Uh, and I have a VM. And inside this VM, I have OpenShift running. If you do Docker PS, there are three containers running. These containers are not nodes. They are containers, but these containers will be treated as nodes. So if you see OC get nodes, you will actually see three nodes, but there are containers. You can get inside these containers and create actual containers which will do the job. So um, since I just created this, the, the images may not be there. So I can just start doing it. Mm. It might just fail, but uh, so it's pending and it's going to probably plant it into one of these two nodes, which are containers. So there will be two containers which will, born, will be born inside those containers, which are different, and these two containers running inside this VM, which is running on this bare metal. We can see the internet works. We can have external access from all those two containers, which are deep embedded inside. And those two containers can talk to themselves also. This the container is coming out of the container, is coming at the VM level, and then talking to each other. So we can ping it. Uh, that, that's the demo. I just don't want to run out of time if if, if we are. So uh, while the image is being downloaded, if you have questions, we can just take that in parallel. And if it works, you can clap. If it doesn't, just believe me, it does. <laughs> yeah, if there are any questions, right away. Was there or was it a yawn, baby? <laughs> <laughs> no question. You can get a nice scarf for a question. Anyone? No questions. So if, if you see this uh, Docker PS here, this is the VM level. And you see these three containers running. This each of these containers, if you let's let's go inside one of them. Docker exec uh, OpenShift node one. Uh, of course, there's two containers. I mean, the pod running. But if you see this, this is a container. This is not how the container was even originally, you know, evangelized. There's a system D running inside the container itself. This is as good as a VM. I mean, you would have clear containers. Just don't think Docker containers. So once you have clear containers or more examples of that, you would see containers are becoming more comprehensive. So initially, what I said, it's a process. The process itself was system D. And now you have the whole tree running through the system D itself. So yes, it's a mess. But from the networking point of view, we got to fix them all. We got to merge them all. I mean, uh, were you doubting when you were asking that? Uh, yeah, I can I can try and do. Uh, so uh, we went to uh, no, node one. Yeah, so there's a pod running, uh, and I can do. Uh, wait. Old fashioned. Five, three, eight. So this is this container. Let me go again inside the VM. And now the other node, Docker exec, uh, OpenShift node two. And see, there are two containers running. Docker inspect. <coughs> so 
So, 10.1.2.2 and 10.1.1.2 and I should be able to ping it 10.1.2.2 I pings and you can curl it 10.1.2.2 it says this and you can reverse it and you can do TCP dump and you know traffic is working. So, this is from one container it went out to the other container these containers were thinking they were nodes but they are actually containers they come out to the VM level and you can have several VMs. This is done by OpenShift SDN, and this is Docker in Docker as an example. Um, that's the demo I had. Fortunately, it worked. Yes, sir. Why not? I don't know. Yes, I, I, I'm going to. I'm taking notes, and I'm going to read about it. I'm going to find out if it's going to work. Uh, we should work. Yeah, you should help and contribute. It. I, nothing is off the table. I would say, yeah. I, my original idea with IPv6 was that we can use the extensible headers, and then once it goes out of the uh, domain of one provider, it can just latch onto the header, and the uh, others are supposed to preserve it. No one drops the IPv6 headers as a standard. You're not supposed to drop it. So we can take advantage of that. It may be a bad idea, please. It was just too old too idea. But. It's a very good idea. The problem is the same as the Calico stuff. We cannot force our customers to go out. <laughs> if it's all within the same container or our own domain, then we can do it. But as long as we can't force them because they are, we might not be ready for that. Probably just in nature, I believe it's one of the options too. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I. I it has legs. It has legs. Yes. But IPv6 to IPv4 translation was performance killer. Maybe it's improved. Uh, I am told that this is how Google runs their entire backend on. They do IPv6. Everything is backend on IPv6. And then this is, but you know, this is how it was like. Because Google says it must be true or must be right, must be efficient. <laughs> That's not true. We'll find out. We'll see if it works and we stamp it when it does really. I'm sorry. And that was all. Many more questions? Yes. Well, we don't like the double tunneling, double this thing, because you have to uncap, decap, and everything. Uh, and that's the only problem, and MTU. I mean, it's the same thing, right? So. So, so that's that's the way. Out if you if you just go to a customer and then they don't know anything about what they did with the bare metal and then what they did with the VMs and then what they did with their VPNs and then they brought the whole Kubernetes solution. That's exactly what ends up ends up happening. And uh, no one has done it with containers inside containers, but it's going to happen. Yeah. I, I, I think the uh, containers and cont containers was a little bit, you know, troublesome to the mind. But now, now you saw a container running systemd. You can do anything now. It's become a machine now. And see clear containers. And there's more stuff, Hyper-V and whatnot. OK, thank you. Thank you, guys. Please copy your presentation to this uh, USB. Before you leave, I need that back. So to give it back to Jeremy. Yes. Thanks, boss. Yeah. <laughs> So 
bylo by to tady prostě nějaký vzduch. A je to je ten problém, že když to narvo prostě lidi a viac jako je dobré, tak... To není to vyloženě strašný, ale je to, je, je to cítí. Ale teda, jako by vůbec netuším, jak jsou organizovaný ty lightning talky. Právě, že máme to stačí pít a snad je. Možná se opíkat v Telegram ještě, ale... Oni to teďka nějak řešejí, no, ale... A koukám, že jo, vidím, že vás vaše to, že vaše právě píše, že si to oběhne, aby se ujistil, že tomu rozumíme. Uh, on to len třeba hodně vyplaho vyvratit, že to a to si už je pak pohodě. Zdar.